Okay, hi. Um, today we're going to talk about Dennis Burkett, nutrition hero number three. Dennis Burkett lived from 1911 to 1993. He was born in Ireland, then he trained in surgery in England. He worked there for a while and then he became a missionary doctor in Africa. And he noticed a teenage child with a big uh, tumor on the side of the face, on the rising from the jaw. And it was an interesting tumor. He'd never seen anything like it before. So he started asking all the other doctors if they'd seen it before. And he ended up thinking there might be a connection with a the virus. There was a hot topic of research at that time. He ended up traveling all over Africa, over 10,000 miles, studying this tumor to try to find other cases of it. Because there was quite a bit of interest in those days in linking tumor causation with viruses. Obviously, there's a ton more to do with tumors and viruses. And that's actually not one of the more common causes. Um, but it, it led to him getting a job as an epidemiologist in charge of uh, over 100 hospitals in Africa. And so he had a lot of data coming into him. And the big thing was he noticed the difference in the pattern of diseases with the persons eating traditional plant-based diets versus eating westernized diets like uh, persons from England typically did with a lot of tea and bread and jam, refined flour. Um, some other physicians, you know, now that he was more well known for epidemiology, spoke with him. In particular, Peter Cleave was an English physician who felt that the big increase in westernized type chronic diseases was due to an excess of simple sugars. And you could make an argument that, you know, sucrose, for example, table sugar, when it splits, you get glucose and fructose. The fructose, when present in excessive amounts, is often converted by the liver into fat, saturated fat, fatty liver, and the whole cascade of events that goes with that to sort of like a mild, uh, it's like pre-diabetes, early diabetes of the liver is really what fatty liver is like. Super common now. I see tons of them all day long. Um, the next thing is you trowel, another physician there, missionary uh, working with Dennis Burkett and a research scientist, Alec Walker, they both felt the primary problem was a lack of dietary fiber. And Dennis Burkett didn't even start researching fiber until he's about 56 years old. By the way, I love Dennis Burkett. If, if, the more you learn about him, you'll love him. There's a great biography about him by Ethel Nelson was her name. I read it. It's great. It's real enjoyable, upbeat, positive, um, and goes through all the details of the history of it. But the main thing Dennis Burkett became famous for was his description of abdominal pressure syndrome. Abdominal pressure syndrome is caused by lack of fiber. I'll, I'll stand up for a sec just because I think it'll make more sense. Um, in the abdomen, your abdomen is like a question mark. So here's the, here's the rectum where you see it, and it comes up like this and around. Basically, on the right side of the abdomen, your stool should be, dry, your stool should be wet. And that's because fiber pulls water into the stool. And then a relatively wet stool, gradually the water is reabsorbed from it, and then you defecate it out. A normal healthy bowel movement is like a cow patty. It should be soft, relatively large. Okay, when people are eating uh, a diet of low fiber food, like a lot of processed food and excessive amounts of meat, for example, there's virtually no fiber in those diets. So they become constipated because it's the fiber that pulls the water into the stool. When a person's constipated, a lot of bad things happen if it's a chronic problem. So for example, on the right side of the colon, this is where the appendix is, it's like a little finger coming off of the cecum, that's the lower part of the right colon. That gets plugged up with stool, the stool's dried out, it's called an appendical lift. That'll obstruct the appendix. The appendix keeps secreting fluid, and the fluid can't get out because it's blocked at the top of the appendix by the appendicle lift. And so then it pops. That's what appendicitis is. Much more common in persons who do not eat a plant-based diet. Meat eaters, processed food eaters. Okay, the next thing is, when you're straining at the stool every day, you increase abdominal pressure. To tighten your abdominal muscles, that's called a valsalva maneuver. And valsalva maneuver on a chronic basis, chronic increase into abdominal pressure. There's back pressure on the sigmoid colon. And parts of the sigmoid colon start to pop out. Those are called diverticuli. The condition is called diverticulosis. Super common. Ask any radiologist to see it all day long. And then also, any big hospital typically will get at least one or more admissions every day for one of those diverticuli popping. And then they leak stool into the abdomen. That's called diverticulitis. It'll sometimes form a local abscess. Sometimes it can be a larger perforation and lead to, lead to emergency surgery. But it's a big deal. A lot of these patients end up having... Uh, catheter drainages for their abscess. A lot of them end up going to surgery, get a sigmoid resection. Um, in addition, of course, there's a much higher incidence of colon cancer in a low fiber diet. There's a lot of fat in these diets and there's a lot of prolonged contact of secondary bile salts with the colon lining and those are carcinogenic. 
Um, in addition, there's additional things ha that happen caused by uh, the amount when there's large amounts of meat. Okay, now I got to switch to the next slide. Uh, and yeah, by the way, I have a picture of Dennis Burkett in my bathroom. I have a picture of a lot of my heroes in my bathroom. I like to do that. You know, you see some people that inspire you, and um, that's a good thing. Okay, let me go to the next slide. I got two slides here on him. Okay, so what else happens? I got to stand up again here. Oh, wait, I got to go into a different window. Sorry about that. I'm kind of new to this. It's not letting me. Okay, so the next thing is I'll stand up here is chronic straining at the stool during defecation. You get increased back pressure into the leg. So this is a major cause of varicose veins in the legs. So being constipated, a lot of people that care about varicose veins. Good to know where it comes from. That's how you optimize treatment of any disease. Know what causes it and then you, know, you can avoid what causes it. All right, what else happens? That increased pressure in the male scrotum causes a varicocele, increased risk of hernias, Straining at the stool, increased pressure in the veins around the rectum, so there's increased hemorrhoids. Um, and probably what's the main complication of abdominal pressure syndrome I see most often? Um, that increased abdominal pressure causes the stomach to pop up into the chest. So your stomach, your esophagus normally joins with the stomach at the level of the diaphragm. And then what happens is when there's constant pressure, the stomach will pop into the chest. Usually it's only a small part, a small hiatal hernia. Sometimes it's big. I've seen the entire stomach up in the chest quite a few times. But you then get reflux of the gastric acid into the hiatal hernia. That's called gastroesophageal reflux disease. It's usually abbreviated GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. And the problem is that constant acid irritation, it also affects the lower esophageal uh, lining. The epithelium is the lining cells that line a tube in the body, like the esophagus, and it causes inflammation of them. Then they get a secondary uh, change in their morphology, their shape. It's called a metaplasia. And then you get something called Barrett's esophagus, a precancerous condition. And back when I was a resident, main thing we saw for esophageal cancer was called smoker drinker cancer. You know, that would be squamous cell carcinoma. But esophageal cancer has changed. There's so many people with hiatal hernia and gastroesophageal reflux. The most common type of esophageal cancer now is an adenocarcinoma. Um, so, best thing to do is try to avoid all of it and not be constipated. Uh, let's see, what else was interesting? Oh, the local population of persons um, indigenous around that area, they were eating a diet of yams, you know, sweet potato, brown rice, local uh, fruits and vegetables, and they would have big, soft bowel movements, their stools, you know, like a cow patty, that's normal. But the persons that were eating, uh, High fat diets, a lot of uh, meat, jam, refined flour, and whatnot, they'd, have, they'd be constipated. So the stool had excessive time in the colon, and that leads to it being dried out, and they passed small bowel wounds. And they had all the coronary artery disease as well, lots of gallstones, all those secondary, typical chronic uh, disease things that westernized diets lead to. Um, here in the slide, I got the name spelled out there Ethel Nelson. Her biography is excellent and it's very entertaining. Um, Dr. John McDougall has an excellent video uh, interviewing live with Dennis Burkett. Uh, let me see if I have anything else interesting on it. Yeah, just basically his quotes. You know, Dennis Burkett said, mankind will never improve his health until he returns to a diet of eating plant foods because they're low in fat, high in fiber. Our bodies are adapted to the Stone Age diet of roots and vegetables. Um, Dr. Dennis Burke felt that people should be eating 100 to 150 grams of fiber per day. Average Americans only eating about 12 grams of fiber a day per day. They're constipated with all this. And I can tell you, abdominal pressure syndrome is so common. When I look at a CAT scan of the abdomen in a person over 50, I expect to see it. I expect to see some manifestation, diverticulosis, um, gallstones. Those are probably the two most common things I see, and, and hiatal hernia, the three most common things. And then it's associated with a calcified atherosclerotic aorta. The calcified atherosclerotic aorta is associated with degenerative disc disease of the spine that works its way all the way up and down. And I'll see calcifications of the coronary arteries. All this stuff goes together. It all kind of has the same cause, most of it. Um, any other good quote here from Dennis Burkett? He said, it's better to build a fence at the top of a cliff than to park an ambulance at the bottom, meaning that it's better to prevent the disease than to focus on treating it. And he said, uh, basically, until people pass large bowel movements, there's going to, when they have small bowel movements, you need big hospitals. When they have big bowel movements, you don't need such a big hospital, according to Dennis Burkett. 
So anyways, make sure you get your fiber. Uh, try to get at least about 50 uh, grams a day. I think that would be good. Um, he said in 20 years working um, in, in, in Africa as a surgeon, he only had to remove one gallstone. Normally, people go for gallbladder surgery every day. You know, most gallstones, 95 plus percent of them are just cholesterol precipitation. Um, okay, that's it.